Hello, everybody, and thank you for forever joining me today. This is your guy, Mr. M. Dango. I'm the entrepreneurship trainer, business coach, and Mr. Automator. So today, you know, I said, okay, how about we can talk about another topic that is so interesting. And so many people, you know, they've been asking me like, um, how can I make this as my niche, uh, 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 um, uh, as a coach? And I said, you know, I'm not quite sure how you can make it, but I think I'm gonna find a way of how you can make it. And then to do, they pick your pick, all of your bags, because right now we are departing at the airport. We're going all the way to the desert of Phoenix in USA, where, where we are going to meet someone who is so dear to me. You know, we met some, uh, I think it's like weeks now, and she became my client. We've been working day and night, you know, because of the time zone, it's like crazy, but I'm loving it, I'm loving it, but I also love how, how passionate this lady is in helping people. Okay, so today I am sitting here with Kanye, the love girl, the love girl, you know, uh, who is the possibility champion. Uh, she is the founder of the two most powerful body guys. One of it is called Real Love, Real stories and loved and lost. Oh, wow. Loved and lost. Real love, real stories. The possibility champion. I can't wait to, to bring this lady uh, uh, on the stage. Can you please help me welcome uh, Kanye? How are you, Kanye? Oh my gosh. I love that introduction. I am doing fantastic. How are you? This is exciting. I'm doing great. I'm just excited about what are we going to talk about today? You know, it's just <laughs> one of the topics that is either underrated, yet most of the people really love to be loved and love to find love, but they just don't, they just don't know how to. And, you know, business-wise also, so, so some people have been asking, how can I do this? as a business person, because really, I don't know what to do, you know, and some other people, they are either focused on their business and abandon the love, or either they are focusing on the love and abandon the other side, you know, so, so, so this is one of the craziest topic that we're gonna need to do, dive deep into, and I know you are the right person who's gonna do that for us. So, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, know this I'm excited. This is, you know, love is my favorite topic to discuss. So yeah, absolutely. I'm here for you. I'm here to talk about it, to answer any questions. This is like exciting to me. So amazing, amazing. So can you please tell us a bit about your, your, yourself? Who, who is Kanu? Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, you know, like you said, Kanu, Kanu Jacobson. I am actually originally from Zimbabwe and moved to the US uh, a few years ago, actually many years ago. And, you know, I live in Phoenix, Arizona, like you said, in the desert and love it here because it's sunny all the time. And I hold a master of arts degree in counseling, which is, uh, which afforded me to work with couples and even single people and, um, and so that, that was one of the reasons why I ended up doing what I'm doing. But like you said, I'm a podcaster. I show, I, you know, showcase love stories on my Real Love, Real Stories podcast and also talk about singles and try to equip them with tips on how to um, become love attractors and, and they can find love and then come back on my show and then they can share their love stories, right? So um, that is something that I love and I'm very proud of. And I think I'm like almost to like episode 85 or something. So yeah, I've been doing this for about three years, I think. And then the other project that I, I, you mentioned is Loved and Lost. This is very new and that one talks about grief and loss. So um, I know totally different subjects. We're talking about love, you know, finding it. And then on the other hand, I'm talking about losing, um, you know, how we lose people and how we sort of grieve our, our loved ones. So yeah, I am a love guru, like you said. I was very lucky and um, not lucky, but I was nominated in one of the publications in Arizona where they picked me among some Pulitzer Prize winners and some journalists, I mean, some really 
you know, like really accomplished people. And it was nominated and chosen to be the 31st, I believe, in the state of Arizona. So that is something that I'm very proud of. And, you know, as a possibility champion, I'm championing my single people, my single clients, championing them to find love and, and remove some of those barriers that may be in the way of them being love attractors. So, yeah. Wow. Are you single? Are you what? If, if that, there she is, she can help you there because there's so many possibilities that are out there, but we we just don't uh, find them. It, 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 some of them, you know, some of them, they just pass through, right through our nose, but we don't recognize them. But help me, I can, I'm kind of like lost. What made you choose love as a niche? What made you, you know, there are so many niches out there. We've got health and wellness, we've got, money we have got why love out of all this such a complicated topic you know such a complicated niche why that yeah actually i want to say that it chose me <laughs> um so it all actually stemmed from a place of frustration as a single person in america and struggling to find love and um you know and also having the fascination i always tell the story of I love coffee. I love, you know, hanging out in coffee shops. And, you know, I found myself very interested in like watching couples come in and you see two people who are very much in love walk in and, but you look at them, you're like, hmm, how did you two meet? Because sometimes people don't look like they don't really quite belong and yet they're together and they're in love. And so, you know, I stood in line one time and behind this couple and we were talking about, I don't even remember what. And then naturally, the conversation sort of led itself to me asking them how they met. And I got to hear their story, their love journey from when they met to, you know, I don't know how many years later being married. It was so fascinating to me. And I was like, you know what? I thought about, I want to share it with my friends. I want to share it with my family. And then sort of birthed this idea of me wanting to know how people met. And so then I went on a journey of like, I'm going to be asking people how they met. And I just, every time I was like mind blown. And then I decided, you know what, I want to capture this story so I can share with the world. And that's how my podcast started. It's, you know, from me just being curious and from me, um, you know, just uh, like I said, a place of frustration as a single person also. And the whole idea was for me and all the other single people to find hope in these amazing stories that I was sharing mm -hmm. and to remind people that love can happen when you least expect it. And so that's why I love sharing these stories that, you know, you can be at a networking event, business event, and you could meet the love of your life. You can go and volunteer somewhere and you can meet the love of your life. You can go to, uh, you know, to, if you're a person who goes to church and go to a prayer group and you meet the love of your life. You can go travel the world. You can meet the love of your life. There's just so many different ways that you can meet the love of your life. So the point is, go on with your life, do what you love, and love will find you. Go wherever you want to go, do what you love, and love will find you. Wow. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you know, it's it's such an amazing journey. Like, for example, it is also on my side, uh, in my entrepreneurship journey of becoming a coach and sort of stuff. Um, you know, um, it started with with my pain, like, um, what did I do? Uh, uh, um, or or, or the, the pain that I was actually going through for, for me to become who I am. And then I learned so much, you know, I looked around and found out that, okay, it's not only me who went through that pain, but there are so many other people there who also went through that same pain. And, and you know, um, so, 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 so which means also the other people are there who might want my help 
and I'm going to be available to help them, how I can prevent them from having that pain, and which is a very, very good thing. But you talk about me going to, uh, yeah, you talk about um, me going to a prayer group, uh, me going to, to where, you know, um, uh, some, uh, but what can make someone not find love? You know, what can make someone not find love? Is it because of me not going for coffee, not going to volunteer, not going to church for prayer group? What can make me not to find the love that I really want? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, like what you're saying, you know, it's by you doing those things that we just talked about, you are living your life. So some people, you know, they want something and then they just sort of wait, right? Like the person will find them. But if you go and live your life and do the things you love, travel and do this, do that. Like, don't wait to, I always talk about, to, I to talk to my singles that if you want to go to dinner, go yourself. You don't have to find somebody or not go because you don't have somebody to go to dinner with go sit down at a table and, and, you know, in a restaurant and have dinner yourself. You don't have to wait for somebody to treat you to that. Um, but I think that a lot of people, there are some things. So when I work with people that come to me and I put them through this really uh, transformational process, which takes about five weeks. And we really look at, you know, where you are in life. And there's this first part that I, you know, that I call readying yourself for love. And we're actually looking at even like what's on your plate. What do you do on a day-to-day, -day, on a weekly, monthly basis? And let's do um, what I call the, li the life inventory, where you, you literally have to tell me what you do. And then, you know, there are four quadrants in this thing that people go through. So you're choosing, is this important? Yes, you put it in that quadrant where it's like you have to continue doing that. If it's not important and you can wait to do that thing, then you can put it in the parking lot because you need to make, so essentially what I'm trying to, to help them do is what we do in the second module, which is making room for love. Because a lot of people say they want love and you don't really have time to really, you know, have somebody in your life. And so, you know, when they do this exercise is really to figure out, do you have time? Do you have room for somebody in your life? And also we talk about, you know, the blind spots, right? These are the elephants in our lives. And these are the reasons why sometimes we end up repelling love. So most of the clients that come to me, they have gone on dates. Online dating is very big here in the US. So people go on one failed date after another. You know, so you, you go on a date with somebody, first date, second date, and it's still, you're not finding love. So it's like, okay, let's just take a step back and figure out what energy are you putting out there? What exactly is stopping you from connecting with all these people that you're going out with? And also, are these people the right people for you? And that's where the core values and sort of sitting down and like really drilling it down to like, what are your values? You know, so once you know your values, first of all, you will know where, you know, I say, you know, go where you're celebrated. And by going where you're celebrating, you have to know what, what your values are. And then that will help you know where to go to meet that person that will align with you, with your core values. And then the last part that we talk about is what I call mind tasting. So, you know, people do wine tasting and stuff. I say mind tasting. So mind tasting is essentially that. Once you know your core values and you know where your ideal partner most likely hangs out. So the prayer group, let's use that as an example. If you're a person who's a Christian and being with a Christian uh, partner is an important thing to you, then are you gonna go to the bar to find that person? No, right? So you're gonna go to 
a church or whatever establishment that you would meet that person. Mm -hmm. But you have to sit down to write down your values to know what they are and what's important to you. So when you go mind tasting, you're going to a church, you're going to a prayer group, you're going to a church event or whatever that is, right? That's, so when I say you're going where you're celebrated, that's exactly what I mean, is you're going somewhere where people that like the same things as you do will be hanging out. And that's where you can find that connection of, you know, we're here together. Like, for example, you know, people that are into business like yourself, you know, I would, if you were single and looking, a business networking event, yes, you're going to do business networking, but you're going to find people of like minds there too. A lot of people have connected, you know, during business networking events. So you really have, but you have to sit down and like write it down and figure out what your top five, like I, people that I work with, I have them write down, it could be like 20 um, core values. And then we drill it down to like, what are your five most important values? And then from there, we can now figure out, like, let's figure out how you can meet the person with the same core values, right? And that's where you, you don't have to waste your time. So if that person could be hanging out online, online dating, then you sign up online, you start doing that. If they are not one that would be online dating, then you figure out where exactly can I go? Is it a country club? Is it a bar if that's what you choose? Is it a church if that's what you choose? Like, you know, we all have different values. And um, so, yeah, it's really, it's a very transformational, but very fun process that my clients go through for, for five weeks of like fun. Wow. You know, the, as you are talking like this, um, it just remind, it reminds me of, of the process as well um, that I also check like, um, I like our startup entrepreneurs. You know, if you, you don't know your values, then you can be a person of everything, you know. <laughs> um, I always thought that you, at first you need to know what's your top values, what are your, your, your top five, what are your top 10, what are your, so that, what, what are some of the things that you can't compromise? <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. you can't compromise those things because if you don't have anything, then you are, you are actually in big trouble because there's no one who doesn't have things that they can't compromise. But some of them, they just don't put it out there in front simply because they are desperate of something. And desperate yeah. energy repels, you know, desperate energy, actually instead of it attracting, it's actually chasing away, you know, mm -hmm. that's amazing. But tell yeah. me something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wanted to say something? Yeah, I would just, you know, to add on to what you're saying, it's in business, right? We talk about being clear about yes. what your message is, being clear about what your who your ideal client is, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, thereby sort of defining what your niche is. It's the same thing. Yeah. Who is your ideal partner? And you know, you're not just appealing to every single guy or every single woman you have a type, you have, you know, they have the same core values as you. So it's, I like how you tied it into the business because that's exactly essentially the same sort of process for sure. Wow, that's amazing. But tell me something, <laughs> uh, since most of our, of, the, of our audiences, they are all business people, tell me, yeah, what does love, or, 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 or what impact does love have on entrepreneurship, on your, on your business? Can somebody be grumpy simply because they are, they are not finding love? Can somebody <laughs> be, uh, lose business simply because they are, they are chasing uh, 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 two different things? But you know, before you also go, uh, go there, I just wanna touch on the point that you mentioned that is so important. <laughs> go where you are celebrated. Yes. If we're in church, I was gonna say, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, there are so many people who are wasting time in wrong places, you know, finishing all of their bullets in wrong places simply because they are not being celebrated there. But you know, they are trying to impress, they are living to impress. And once you go and live to impress, think that okay, that maybe that's how people are going to find me. 
then you will be wrong because when I impress, 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 before you know it, you are broke. When I impress, 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 before you know it, you you are 52 without finding love, you know, or 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 or, 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 or without something else. So go where you are celebrated. I love it. Then now back to our point of what impact does love have on our entrepreneurial journey? Yeah, so that's a very good question. Um, you know, when you think about um love is an inherent need it's essential to human beings like we're wired for relationships right so i often use this um i created this acronym called lover so l-o-v-e-r so the l part is love and i talk about how love is essential love is an inherent need like we all want that and then the o part which is uh optimistic or optimism, like when we grow up, we are all very optimistic about finding love, about being, you know, I remember back in high school and, you know, dating and, and, and you know, guys putting notes in my pocket or something. And, and also, you know, watching movies and reading novels and music, like everything is very love, love, love. And for me, it was watching my parents. They, to me, had the close to the most perfect relationship I'd ever seen. So when you grow up with all that, where, you know, how can you not be optimistic about yourself finding love one day, right? So for me, I was very optimistic about that. And, you know, um, and then I always talk about too, when you think about Eric Erickson, and we're talking about psychology now, and you know, by the ages of, I believe it's like 19 to 30, this is where we are in the intimacy versus isolation stage. So if you don't find love in that phase, you're most likely going to be feeling like isolated or you might even isolate yourself and, you know, depression might even set in. Um, so if you're an entrepreneurship to tie in your question to what I'm talking about, if you don't have love and you're dealing with like this lack of love and lack of relationships, it can be very difficult for you to interact with people that are, you know, and, and also at that age group too, it's like people are getting married and you're getting invited to all these weddings. And um, so it can actually be a, a hindrance in people's growth and like, actual success in life because it is something that we have as an inherent need but it's not being satisfied but if you find love in that age group then obviously relationships are very important to you and even connection with people at work or whatever you do it comes very easy because you naturally have that intimacy part right taken care of so you know, it, but it also depends too. Some people are just like very business and they're not worried about love. They just want to, they have that drive of like, I need to achieve and attain this, right? And then I will deal with love later. And so it, it, it just all depends on like where the person is and where they're putting their energy and focus, um, where they're putting it to. And then that would determine whether it actually affects what they do, um, you know, in their work or not. But, you know, if you're trying to, to, if you're starting a business and you're busy, you're in the, you knee deep in like creating all that. And then you're also trying to find love and like go on these dates and stuff. So it goes back to what I was talking about when I work with my clients and we go through that quadrant, the life inventory, so I would talk to my clients if a client comes to me and says, well, I just started a business. I'm also doing online dating. I'm also doing this and that and that. So we take a look at like, what's important right now? Do you need to put all your eggs into this one basket of like creating this business? So the business thrives. And if you try to go on dates at the same time, you know, I know how I am, you know, right now we're talking it's nighttime for me, 9.30 over here. It's quite early for you, 6.30 in the morning. So if I'm trying to go on dates, at what point am I gonna have time to go on dates? 
because I'm working with Mr. Dongo here who's giving me homework to do all day long. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you just have to prioritize what's important to you. And perhaps having a date and starting to date might not be the right time because I'm busy creating a course that I need to launch and bringing somebody into my life right now might not be the right time. So all this to say, you have to take a look at like what's on your plate right now. Can you afford to bring in another thing, which dating can be, uh, it takes a lot of time because you're getting to know this person, you got to cover some time to talk to them and get to know who they are. And, you know, and, and in talking to them, that's making sure that your core values align. It takes a lot of time. So when I was talking about one of the things that I teach my students is, are you ready for love? So that's, you know, the module one, readying yourself for love. And you're asking yourself that question. So um, yeah, as an entrepreneurship, I mean, this is something that I have to deal with. And also some of my colleagues, you know, that I network, business networking, we all talk about, um, and I check in with them, right? Because that's my area of love. And I often give advice of like, you know what? This is not the right time for you to start a new relationship. It is not fair for you. It is not fair for that person. So, you know, trying to juggle both one thing is going to suffer and the other thing is going to do well. So it could be a relationship does well, but your clients are suffering over here. So you kind of have to pick and choose. But some people, though, I mean, they know how to juggle both and kind of keep it evenly. So if you can do that, kudos to you. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, you know, I love the the way you mentioned about timing, like you need to know what's your priority, right? What, what, what is it that you are going to put first? Are you going to be able to balance or you're not going to be able to, uh, uh, to balance? You know, like so many people have said to me, Munya, you don't have life. I said, hello? I said, yeah, you, you don't have life. It's either you are, you are at work or you are at home, nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. And I said, okay. So imagine, I thank God I found love, um, but, and that woman is very strong. I'm telling you, <laughs> she's very strong and thank God for that. But, you know, it also comes to, to, to a point of finding the right person or the wrong person. If you find the right person who is also going to understand you as an entrepreneur with all of your ups and downs, with all of your, of your hustling, your sort of stuff, you're going to say, no, go ahead. We're going to do whatever we do. We're going to go out. Once we do have got the money in the pocket, that's someone. And then if you 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 get with the one hell of a woman or one hell of a guy, when I say, I need to see you, I need your attention yet you are busy doing things, you are busy chasing your own dream, then your relationship is not gonna go anywhere. Sometimes you're gonna feel like, okay, I'm not good enough. And once, once your relationship life is messed up, once your love life is messed up, your business life is also gonna be messed up mostly because your love life is gonna, it, it, it always tends to, to take most of your effort and most of your focus, you know? And you, you, you're gonna, uh, not gonna be focusing on your business and sort of stuff. And that's one thing as well. So tell me, as a lab coach, what are some of the biggest challenges that you have dealt with uh, 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 with your clients? Or what are some of, yeah, yeah, I know you might have touched some of these, no, um, but um, what are some of the things that keeps on coming back? Or, or what are some of the common mistakes that keeps on coming back from different clients? And you always see those mistakes each and every time you are dealing with your clients. What are some of those? Well, the first thing is, you know, uh, people don't feel like this is the ones that are not my clients. They don't feel like there's value in actually working out some of these things. Part of it is that people don't want to find out, you know, those elephants in, the, in their lives that I was talking about. 
So one of the challenges that I see once I sign a client and I tell them that we're going to talk about your blind spots, they just like, what? No, I, I already know is what I hear. A lot of people say, I, I already know what they are. And I'm like, oh, you do, huh? <laughs> right? And, but once they go through the exercise and they hear, because I actually have them um, ask for feedback from their trusted people, really about who they are. And, you know, and by the way, all this that I'm talking about, they are all tried and true strategies that I have personally gone through and had, you know, like a, a, a better phase of people that I had to go through the same process. So um, I got to see it firsthand in my own life and also from those people that I, my trial, you know, clients. So yeah, I, I always chuckle when I sign a client and we're talking about in module two, hey, we're gonna talk about your blind spots and we need to do a survey. I actually use SurveyMonkey to have them send the questions to their trusted people to get feedback about them to find out what it is that their loved ones know about you that they wouldn't tell you to your face because they know you wouldn't take that feedback very well. But I want to hear it because that's what's going to help you grow. Knowing those things that those, you know, blocks that is essentially are stopping you from finding love. And once you know that, that is power because you can now change your narrative and you can turn that into an advantage to allow love to find you or for you to find love. So very powerful. It just, you know, from, from people at first saying, oh, no, no, no. So it's, it's about me as a coach trying to convince them like how important it is that we do this exercise. And sometimes it can be very challenging because, you know, they feel like they know, but then once they get the feedback, it's like, I always have tears on the phone or on Zoom when I talk to clients, when once we're going through the, the feedback they receive, because they're just like mind blown. And then I wanna say to them like, remember when you said you knew? So now why are you surprised hearing people say this about you that you thought you knew and you're surprised, so. Wow, wow. So finding your blind spots, right? Finding your, your blind spots, even in life in general. Blind spots are those things, you know, those, um, they can be our darling uh, things, you know. We, we love the, those things and we put them under the carpet. Um, uh, you know, uh, if it was a, at a, a church, you could say that those are part of our darling sins, you know. We make it ours, you know, <laughs> um, I, I, in health. Ah, it's my high, I mean, uh, uh, it's my high blood pressure. It's my diabetes. It's my this, it's my, that. you make them yours. You make them part of you. So for you not to recognize that, hey, this thing doesn't belong here. It's not gonna need other people to, 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 to tell you on so that. Wow, that's so amazing. Um, what are some of the tips that you, you can give people out there on how can they find love? How can they network? How can they do? Yeah, uh, what are some of the uh, uh, your your top three tips uh, and so like that, uh, that that you can actually give people? I know you might have spoken, you might actually uh, uh, tell us all of them, but can, can you just um, uh, elaborate them as well? Oh yeah, yes. So the first tip is you need to find a coach who can help you through it, and so I am one of those coaches. Um, the second thing is, you know, the first thing that you can do really and a low hanging fruit thing to do is to ask yourself the question, am I ready for love? Is this the right time, the right season for me to be looking for love? And also ask your question of like, am I 100% whole? A lot of people go into this saying, I want somebody to complete me. I want 50-50 and all that other language that people say. I say, you need to be 100%. You don't need somebody to like help you be happy. You need to be happy on your own because when you are happy on your own, you finally find that person, then the relationship is gonna be so easy. You're not relying on him or her 
to give you that happiness. So a lot of the things that you have to do is to like really do a lot of that inventory within yourself and, and ask yourself like, what areas am I lacking in that I need to, to work on? And, you know, and, and one helpful tip is to reach out to people that you know that are in your circle and just kind of help ask them the question of like, hey, so, you know, I'm working on myself and I want to get ready to find love. You've known me for so many years. What areas do you think I should work on to improve myself? And it, 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 it helps you more than in just finding love, but it also helps you in like all the other relationships in your life, your family, your colleagues at work, your business networking friends and all that, because those blind spots sometimes actually um, sort of spill into the other relationships that we have. And once you work on them, one, your inner brilliance is gonna shine and it'll match what, what's on the outside. And once you do that, you are going to be a love magnet. And I'm not just talking about romantic love. I'm talking about relationships. Um, I don't know in your life, if you've ever met somebody who, you know, whether it's at work or whatever, and you just like, wow, this person, everybody just likes this person. What is it about this person that everybody just kind of gra gravitates towards this person, yeah. right? Hmm. Yeah, and so that person, their inner brilliance is shining. And when, once your inner brilliance shines and it sort of matches what's on the outside, you are a love magnet and people gravitate towards you to want to be your friend, to want to hang out with you because you have this positive energy about you and, you know, and, and you're just a good person to be around. So, yeah, so those are some of the tips that I would say, you know, just is low hanging fruit, just work on that. Wow. Number one, find a coach, but don't just find a coach if you are not coachable. In all areas of your life, find a coach for your health, for your relationship, for your business. But if you are not coachable, please don't go and waste your, your money. Go and sleep and continue suffering <laughs> because <laughs> coaching needs someone who is coachable. All right. right, right. You, you know what, Karen, you, you spoke about one of the most important points. And if we find that point and apply it in our life, everything is gonna go well. Complete yourself. You yes. yourself, you don't need anyone to complete you. There's nothing going, I can't live without you. No, that's crazy. Yeah. I, you're, you're my whole life, no. Which means yeah. you, you yourself are the one with the problem, <laughs> you know? Because if I am going to someone who's only gonna be happy simply because Munya is there, then what if I'm, I'm not on my good mood on that day? Who's gonna right. be happy, right? So yeah. you're gonna be miserable simply because of, 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 of that, right? Uh, that, that's a very important point. Please, that, that is a very important point. I think on our next talk, we should do how to complete yourself and go deep in, in, into that. Oh, 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 actually, I know it's in one of your programs, right? Of how can somebody really complete them themselves? So tell me here, tell me, here, what programs are you running? What is it that, that you are doing? to help all these entrepreneurs, to help all these people, uh, I mean, yeah, all the, 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 these people in the world to find love. What exactly are you doing? Yeah, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to share that. Um, so I have several different programs that I think everybody can find something uh, in the menu of offerings that I have. So the very first product that I, released out there it's an e-course and it's catered or curated for single black women and you know you can purchase the course and go edit yourself you get a module every seven days um, and you can also sign up to work with me one-on-one -on -one. that's another option or you can get your girlfriends and up to five girlfriends can come together and we can go through um, the modules together on Zoom. You know, it doesn't matter. We don't have to be in the same area. We don't have to be in the same time zone. 
we can just make it work, get together and work together as a group. It's fun that way too. So that's the one for single black women. And then I created another one, which I'm pre-selling right now, which is for all my other women friends out there that are single. And um, it has tons and tons of great, great information. But the overall thing is we go through the same modules of readying yourself for love, um, facing your blind spots, and then making room for love, and also really fine tuning who your ideal partner is. And as well, the last one that I said, mind tasting, um, you know, and we can even talk about how this is 2020, right? So if you like a, a guy, you don't have to sit in the corner and wait for him to come talk to you. You can go and start a conversation with the guy or the girl, whoever that you like, you don't have to be shy. So a lot of people actually, they struggle with letting somebody know that they like, you know, they like them. So there are certain ways, some nuances and stuff that we go through that can help mm -hmm. kind of nudge the person. Like, hey, I'm interested in, you know, in talking to you. Business networking events are one of those very common places where you can be very professional, very business-like, and yet also, you know, meet like minds and, and end up having a good relationship out of that, you know, yeah. uh, that sort of setting. So that single woman's advantage, which is, like I said, it's for all women. It doesn't matter what race you are. It's catered for um, all my women friends as well. I can do one-on-one -on -one coaching with anybody and I can also do group coaching with any girlfriends that wanna to come together. And also this new thing that I am launching uh, very soon, probably in the next few days, where it's a membership one, where you know, for a very small fee, you can get all kinds of tips and strategies and um, you know, everything that you need really to equip you to find love, especially since 2021 is just around the corner. And, you know, I want to hear a lot of love stories come through my mailbox from the people that I'm working with that would tell me that they found love, not only just found love, they found love from a person who celebrates them like we're talking about. I want lasting relationships. Wow, she, I, I can say this is like a lifetime guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> she wants that lifetime relationship. Wow, that's so amazing. And don't you have a webinar? I do, I do. So I have a webinar actually that is running that, you know, people can, and, and we talked about the LAVA acronym. I talk about that in depth. People can play along and actually there's it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. and um yeah so it's it's going on they can go to singlewomansadvantage.com and they're able to register for the webinar and go through it it's very short it's like 20 30 minutes or something mm -hmm. like that but filled with information that's really fun and can get them to decide where on that lover on the love continuum which is the lover where they are so no matter where they are on the love continuum, they can find love, they can attract love. So it's a fun process. And I think that everybody should go through that webinar and see, um, you know, and, and learn a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the webinar is free guys. And, and, the, and the webinar is free. So you can actually click on the link below. I think I'm also gonna put it on the link below. Uh, yeah, so that you can be able to, uh, to, to watch it. And then I, I actually listened to it because I, she is my client. So, so I had to, to listen to it and learn what exactly is it that she is uh, telling people out there. And I said, okay, I think this can be also a perfect fit for, yeah. for, for, for my clients, all of them in general as well. So thank you so much for sharing such. Let me tell you one thing. You are amazing. I love your energy. I love how coachable. I love uh, your, your courses. I love what you are doing, like just going out there and helping people. It's, 
it's one of the most amazing things that you are doing. And thank you so much for, for, for your that. We, we oh. need a lot of you in the world. Thank you. I mean, this is amazing. You're my coach. So, hey, I, I think very highly of you as well. So thank you for having me. Thank you for being my coach. I just, I love it. So thank you. Great. Well, there you have it. Uh, Kano is here, the love guru, the possibility champion. <laughs> She's here to help you find love, be loved and be lovable as well. She, she, she is here to, to, to help you um, uh, uh, connect with the right love partner. She's here to do everything, take you through the whole process. And most of you, you are actually in love, but not with the right person. <laughs> Not with the right person, no, not at all. And some of you, you are not in love. Uh, and some of you, you don't wish to be in love. But the relationship in this love, it doesn't mean that you are only finding somebody to, to get married or, or to actually married to. <laughs> but also love with your family, love with your business partners, love with anyone that is in your world, you know. So you need to, to find that. So thank you so much, Kanye, for showing up. And thank you so much for coming and sharing such amazing tips. If this was the most amazing uh, webinar I, I, I ever had, uh, the interview I ever had. And thank you so much uh, for, for just sharing that. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. Um,